Hello and welcome to the Siwi Sofa, where we sit down with some of the most interesting participants at this year's World Water Week to learn more about the array of water-related issues being discussed this week in Stockholm. My name is Eric Paglia, host of the Siwi Sofa, which is now being sent live, streamed live, on the Siwi Media Hub. And the name of this session is Water, Sustainable Business, and China's Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI for short, is a massive Chinese government program of infrastructure investments on a magnitude of hundreds of billions of dollars, which aims to bolster economic development and expand trade ties with a wide array of countries across Asia, Europe, Africa, and around the world. Now entering an early stage of implementation, BRI will have far-reaching impacts on water stewardship and sustainable business practices on a global scale, not least in the textile industry. And joining me for a discussion on this very exciting uh, initiative, we have Mr. Nubo uh, from the National Development and Reform Commission of the People's Republic of China, NDRC for short, which formulates and implements strategies of national economic and social development and related to, re to resources and environments such as climate and water and directly promotes and pushes forward the restructuring of China's economic system. Also joining us, we have Mr. Hao Cheng, from the China National Textile and Apparel Council, an, ad an administrative organization for the largest textile production area that represents 55% of the total fiber manufacturing in the world. And also joining us, we have Pernilla Haldin from the fashion giant H&M. So welcome you all very much to the uh, Siwi Sofa. Very happy to have you here today. Thank you. And I should also mention we have a translator here who will be translating uh, the uh, responses from Chinese into English. Um, We'll start with the, the first question to uh, Mr. New. Um, considering the scale and scope of BRI, it will no doubt have a major effect on sustainability and business practices across much of the world. How do you expect this to impact the environment and the use and conservation of vital resources such as water in the years ahead? Ah 那么现在一带一路沿线的国家呢 那么呢，在此同时呢，我们也看呃看到，就是说谈到水嘛，就是中国呢本身是一个缺水的国家，呃呃人均呢水资源占有量呢不足世界平均水平的五分之一，那么呃沿线呃一带一路沿线的国家
环境啊、水资源的可持续利用，保证这个经经济发展“一带一路”的经济发展是可持续的。谢谢。Yeah. Uh, since 2013, President Xi Jinping has、uh, launched the, the project, the BRI, the 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 Belt and Road Policy, and、uh, by it now is the, at the early age of implementation. And now the implementation has been spread into over 100 countries, including five continents, including Africa, Europe, and Asia. And on the throughout the road, the the distribution of water resources is the most crucial and important issue, because many countries along the belt、um, face a problem of dis distribution and effective usage of water resources. So the most important issue for us. Is to make sure the transfer of knowledge and to make sure the construction of effective, in in fact, effective infrastructures. That means we have to ensure the the we have to ensure the sustainability and to make sure that on the knowledge level we can also confer the knowledge and techniques to concrete and. Efficient infrastructures that can make sure the effective usage of water resources.、Oh, very interesting,、um, Mr. Hao.、Um, textile is one of the basic industries in China.、Um, based on the BRI policy, what kind of change will occur in the textile industry, and what is、uh, CNTAC's strategy in the next few years? 想请问郝先生，就是针对就是一针对就是“一带一路”的这个将这些策略嘛？那请问就对中国纺织业以及就是中国纺织与医疗这个协会，就之后的这些整体的区域规划会有什么样的一个变动？会有以及你们要怎么应应这些措施？好，啊，谢谢主持人啊。这个首先我纺织行业呢，从二零一四年开始呢，就和 WWF 就是世界经济会。一起呢发出了“善水行动在纺织”的这个倡议，呃，我们还通过做国家在纺织行业的用水标准，来推进水效领跑者的这个制度。另外来讲的话呢，呃，我们还呢号召这些企业呢，来这样话这个遵循这个水环境的这些生态方面的这些有关规则。呃，具体说到“一带一路”和走出去这个相关政策。对我纺纺织行业的影响，那因为我纺织行业呢，这个年加工纤维的总量是五千三百万吨，大概占全球的百分之六十，啊，这个产能。那这样的话呢，而我纺织产业主要这个分布在我们东部沿海的五个省，而那个地区呢，劳动力成本呢是现在相对比较高，而且来讲的话呢，这个环保要求现在国家修订环保要求，它的。环境压力也比较大，而且资源呢，水这个也烧，也这个包包括原料，还是相对的比较紧张。那这样的话呢，国家“一带一路”战略和走出去战略呢，为我们行业的发展呢带来了机遇。什么样的机遇呢？首先来讲，这个东南亚国家，或者说我西部地区或者那些沿线国家，它的这个呃劳动力成本相对比较低，这、就是第一方面。第二方面，他们那儿有原料。啊，那这样的话呢，为这个它的那个能源也相对便宜。那这样的话呢，为我们这个行业企业进行产业结构调整布局，就带来了机遇。挑战是什么呢？因为在这个东南亚地区也好，和这个西部地区啊，它不同的哪里呢？我的西部地区这个水资源还是相对的比较紧张、比较脆弱，环境比较脆弱。那这样的话呢，我们。往那儿引进的呢，就是有侧重呢，主要是劳动力密集型的，跟能源有关的，比如说纺织行业的纺纱制造，用水量少的，呃，易燃企业适度发展，啊，适度是引导过去。而东南亚地区呢，它呢这个除了上述的原因外，它有风水，那这样的话，除了这个劳动力密集型的纺纱制造服装以外呢，印染行业就是去的稍微多一些。这个呢，这个就是说“一带一路”来讲的话，总体来说啊。它这个对我们既有机遇又有挑战，但是生态和环境呢，始终是我们关注的话题。那我们作为一个负责任的大国的负责任的行业，那我们会引导我们的行业企业可持续的走出去和“一带一路”。
to put it shortly, we can say that um, BRI policy brings us both challenges and opportunities. We can start with the opportunities, that is, yeah, um, for the time being, the manufacturing of China's industry in textile industry accounts for 6% of the world's total production. But for the time being, it is a imbalanced development because most of the industry is distributed in the five, con five provinces c close to the, to the eastern coast. And for the time being, the labor cost on the, east, on the eastern coast areas is relatively higher while by means of BRI, we can seek the op opportunity to bring the development back to the Middle East of China, where the labor is much cheaper, and in order to lower the, the cost of the, for the industry. But in the meantime, there is also a number of challenges, because in the Middle, in the middle East of China, the water resources is a is a challenge due to due to the natural due to the natural conditions. So in the process of transferring from the manufacturing of the manufacturing from east from east coast to the Middle East, we have to make sure that the water supply also corresponds to the to the expansion of the industry so that a harmonious development can be achieved and guaranteed in the process of transferring. And mean, in the meantime, we will also seek more cooperations with countries located in East, 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 Southeastern Asia to make sure that it is a balanced and well-planned geographical development. I see. Um, Ms. Aldin, now with BRI now entering a stage of implementation, uh, how are global fashion brands such as H&M engaging with the changing supply chains and new manufacturing landscape that the initiative entails? And how will this affect your overall efforts to achieve sustainability? Well, One Belt, One Road is a huge project, so it's very hard to foresee what the impact of it today and with the information we have today, it is, that's hard. But if we look in general, I would say that transport is one part, and that is transport from uh, from the, our suppliers with the ready-made garments out to our sales countries. So that's transport to the, uh, the rest of the world. But it's also transport of material. Uh, as we said here that in China, a big part of the world's material is made in China. And uh, to be able to transport that material to other uh, production countries like Bangladesh or Myanmar or Cambodia, Vietnam, that that can be absolutely an opportunity if that transport is made in a faster and most importantly a more environmental friendly way. So that, it, that can be an, uh, an one impact. Uh, another impact is that uh, the Chinese government would like to move parts of the tier two, what we call tier two, and the tier two is where we dye the garments or the, or the material. And <coughs> that they would like to move that from where we have our supply chain today from the coast to uh, one belt, one road. And the dyeing industry, the tier two, is a very wa water intensive. And one belt, one road along that has areas with water scarcity. So that is a big challenge. Moving the supply chain over there, that means building new factories. Building new factories can be an opportunity because then if the Chinese government and the suppliers invest in the latest technology that that can be i mean the, it, there are tele technology today uh, where there is no waste water for example that that is obviously an opportunity i would say for us for at h&m we don't know today if any of our supply chain will move to one one belt one road so i'm talking more in general terms there oh, i see and uh, back to you uh, mr new um may I ask um what policy measures does the NDRC have in place that ensure that best water stewardship practices within the textile industry will follow along with the expansion of BRI? Uh, 
等于说针针对这个一边一一一带一路这个扩张嘛，那你们是否应制出制定出个相对应的方案出来？相对应的水资源管理的方案对吗？嗯，对吗？啊，好，呃，中国政府呢，那个十分重视这个水资源的利用和那个水水资源的节约和提高那个水资源的利用效率。呃，长期以来呢，我们出台了很多呃政策和措施，那么呢，我们也取得了一些成绩。呃，到两千一呃十五年呢，我们应该有呃近七十个城市达到国家级的节水型城市，呃，一百座城市呃达到了省级的呃节水型城市，呃，万元工业增加值呢，用水量呃下降了百分之三十五。应该说呢，这个成绩是很巨大的。那么进入“十三五”以来呢，我们一是着眼于国内的水资源的利用，二是说呢，我们随着“一带一路”呃的走出去的互联互通、互融互通，那么呢，我们制定了很多具体的政策，比如说我们实行最严格的水资源管理政策。呃，水资源的呃强度和总量消耗、总量的呃控制制度，但是这是针对我们国内的。还有呢，比如说我们水污染防治行动计划、全民节水行动计划，还有呢我们“十三五”节水型社会建设的规划等等吧，一系列这样的政策，目前呢都在呃有些呃按部就班的执行。那么这个执行呢，应该说还是很具体的。举个例子来说，我们，呃，最呃，我们那个水资源消耗总量和强度控制方案，在执行过程中呢，我们要把这个用水的呃量分配到每一个省去，对吧？然后在每一个省呃经济发展的同时，你必须考虑到用水总量，对吧？受到限制，用水的效率要达到一定的高，这样才能呃既保证了经济发展又。呃，保证了水资源的可持续的利用。那么，呃，随着我们“一带一路”互联互通走出去之后呢，我相信我们这些政策呢，也会通过一些国际的平台，通过国际交流，这些政策也为“一带一路”呃呃的沿线国家可以借鉴利用。另外呢，我们呢也可以接近一些更先进的，比如说平台，比如说水州这样的平台。那么有更更加呃好的理念，我们也会应用到这个“一带一路”的建设中去。还有呢，就是说我们比如说我们国内正在进行的呃制度建设，我们正在呃建立一个水效标识制度。那么所谓的水效标识呢，就是在用水产品上贴个标签儿，把它明示出来你的用水的效率、用水的量啊，这个产品是什么状态的。那么将来呢，我们希望呢，我我们的这个制度，还有我们做了一系列的节水的标准体系，这都需呃需要有一个跟国际接轨的过程，呃，因此呢，我们希呃呃很高兴啊来到水州这个参加这个活动。那么我们也希望呢利用这个平台呢，把把我们的所做的呃工作呢，还有我们所做的努力呢，呃跟国际接轨。啊，得到国际的认可，同时呢，我们也希望借鉴国际国际的经验，把最好的、把最呃最最最合、最适合应用的东西，对吧？最适合那个呃水资源节约和水水资源管理的东西，我们随着“一带一路”然后走出去。谢谢。Since long, the management and the effective usage of、um, water resources has always been the, an important issue for the Chinese government. For example, the Chinese government. Has already make 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 um the the system of management or or controls to make sure that cities at municipality levels and on province levels follow up the effective usage and the effective usage of water resources. For the time being, there has already been around 100 cities on province level who ha which have already reached the the standard, and but in the meantime. We also make sure, not only governments but also the companies at different levels also follow up the water water usage standard. For example, we ask companies to label when they when they when they launch a new product. We ask them to label to to specify how the water efficiency the product has. So this is it's not only a It's not only a abstract concept on the policy level, but it's also already being implemented on the very in the very first in the very front at the at at the first line, and 
mean, in the meantime, we also cherish such a uh, what we also cherish water what water, water week as a very very invaluable platform where we have the opportunity to ex to exchange with our partners to give something and to take something back we also ho we also hope that um, BRI also can serve as a role model in the future to come in the future to come for for developing countries that is that are located along the road because they also face the issue the issues and concerns regarding the shortage of water resources so we hope that Chinese ex Chinese experience in the long term will also be a role model a positive lesson for other countries to learn from in a, in a longer term yeah very good and uh, Ms. Aldine um, as a public affairs professional at H&M as well as an expert on China who's actually lived in uh, Beijing and uh, was uh, studying there as well. Um, what opportunities and challenges do you see at the interface of BRI and water stewardship in the global textile industry as H&M and other companies strive to spread sustainable business practices across borders? Well, first of all, I think it, I mean, we're, it's positive that the Chinese government are having environmental action plans and we truly hope that they will implement them in a fully way and in a good way. Uh, we work. We have a very strong sustainability agenda. We've had it for many, many years, and we are leading. Uh, we are a leading company, and we want to lead the textile industry. And uh, doing that, we work very close with our suppliers. We have a very close relation. There are some suppliers we work with for 20, 30 years. And obviously when we work close, we can also have an impact on their, on their way of producing in a sustainable way. And working with us, that has meant given them the time and the financial means to invest in a sustainable production, which is very important for us. And uh, what, what is also important is to collaborate with a lot of different stakeholders, our suppliers, but also other brands, to collaborate with them uh, and with organizations and with, uh, with governments and to collaborate and to really take a water stewardship approach. And to do that, we, we want to influence the textile industry in, being in, in producing in a more sustainable way when it comes to water, when it comes to chemicals, when it comes to social issues as well. It's all very interesting. Well, certainly uh, BRI will have a wide range of impacts on water stewardship in the textile industry and, and far beyond in uh, the years ahead, many years ahead, and I was very happy to hear that uh, you value the World Water Week so much that uh, you feel you need to come here and, and share with us the, uh, the uh, aspects, the water aspects of BRI. So thank you very much for joining us here at the World Water Week and, and on the CV sofa. And uh, we welcome you back in the, the years ahead. And best of luck with the implementation of BRI. And thank you for tuning in to the CV sofa. We'll have more episodes throughout the World Water Week.